in the midst of your people. Good God that you are, give us a word from all of you. In the name of Jesus, shower down your glory. Shower down your spirit. Let somebody be encouraged to go a little further. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Somebody clap those hands, shout amen. God, 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 God. come when you want it to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, but it will come. Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2. Amen. Verse 25. We got a reason to praise him today, y'all.
But I see Sister Lisa here. And a couple years ago, she had a tumor that was deadly. But not only was she healed from that, but the scarred tissue has now been removed. Her father had a stroke this week, but he's now doing better. Y'all ain't saying that. And so when you tell me that God ain't good, When I read this scripture, if you tear this church up, it's okay. But Joel chapter 2, verse 25, are we ready to say amen? amen? He says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord thy God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass. show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Verse 25 and verse 28. Amen. It says, And I will restore to you. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit. I will restore and I will pour. I will restore and I will breathe. I, I will pour. Today, today, today I want to preach from a subject entitled Restore and Outpour. Restore and outpour. Y'all gonna walk with me today? We used to sing a song more frequently than now entitled, God Did It. Miss Evelyn Tarantine powerfully sung the song that pins the word, everything that happened to me that was good. God did it. Y'all remember, don't you? Amen, amen. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh yes, he did it. She continued to say, see, see, once I was lost out in a world of sin, but Jesus came and he took me on in everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. And the vamp of the song, or in the black church, what we call the run of the song, she simply just said, God did it. Y'all remember how Evelyn used to ask us questions, who made the song? Who put the stars in their place? Who put food on your table? And the answers were simple, y'all. God did it. And the thing got so good to her, they used to break the music, amen, and she quit asking specific questions, and she used to say, who did it? God did it. Amen, amen. All of us, all of us love that song in some way, and many of us still sing that song today. Amen. Glory to God, a lady. Her name's Alice from, amen, Mill Branch, from our right there church. Amen. She sings it so powerfully. However, in some odd and strange way, I think that song has crippled us as believers. Because we assume, because we assume that everything that happened to us that was good was God's doing, we unnoticeably accredit everything that happened to us that was bad to the devil. We blame the devil for every bad turn and every evil moment 
presented in our lives. We allow the devil to receive glory over everything that is wrong in our lives. If it looks bad, we blame the devil. Y'all gonna walk with me? Amen. Glory to God. If it sounds bad, we blame the devil. If something goes wrong in our lives, we blame the devil. If it, if, if it turns out bad, if the marriage goes south, we blame the devil. Y'all gonna walk with me? If people stop speaking to one another, we don't say they got a problem, we say the devil is busy. Glory to God. If the church business meeting turns ugly, we don't say folk got out of line, we say the devil is busy. If the microphone goes out, we don't check the batteries, we say that the devil is busy. I wish I had a church here. If you stuck your toe in the dark, you don't say let me turn on the light, you just say the devil is busy. And if you ask me, this is complete madness because you should not blame the devil for everything that looks crazy in your life because the truth of the matter is uh, some of the things that are wrong in our life is the result of us y'all gonna help me here amen most of the tragedies we see in our lives is the direct result of a bad decision that we made most of the issues we face every day is the derivative of a negative choice we chose most of the hardships we have to endure are because of our negative decisions and the word of God is true the word of God is true the word of God is forever set up in heaven be not deceived God is not mine whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For if he soweth of the flesh, he shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if he soweth of the spirit, he shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You don't get what you sow. Somebody say amen there. You're going to reap what you sow. Amen. If you sow bad seeds, you're going to get bad harvest. If you sow corruption, you're going to get corruption. Don't blame the devil for everything that's raggedy in your life. Look at your and say what did I do I might be able to change my situation so many of the things that we see that are bad are because of us and such as is the case in our text we find the children of Israel those grouped together and known as Judah have found themselves suffering because of wrongdoing they are faced with hardships because they have forsaken God and turned to their own way and as a result, the plague of locusts has fallen on the inhabitants of Judah. They have now been stricken with the plague by which different kind of locusts have ate everything up in the city. The Bible says that the locusts, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palm worm have now showed up as a consequence for man's disobedience and wayward lifestyle. And now the people of God are suffering. But this is not the first time we see something like this happen. You remember in the book of Exodus, God played those in Egypt for holding his people hostage. God tells Moses to go down to Pharaoh and demand that the Hebrew people be let go. And the Bible declares in chapter 10 verses 4 through 6 that if Pharaoh refused to let them go, that God would send the locust to deal with him. He tells him that the locust would cover the face of the earth. The Bible says that the locusts will be so big, they would swarm so heavy that no one would be able to see in front of them. They were going to eat everything. Amen. From the tree to the fruit that fell off the tree, the locust was going to destroy it. I wish I had a church to help me in here. The locust would be the result. Amen of a people who did not obey the voice of God. And you must understand hallelujah that as a leader there are people connected to you that are affected by the decisions you make. I wish I had a praying church in here. Glory to God. If Pharaoh did not take heed to what Moses said, everyone in Egypt was going to be plagued with locusts because of a disobedient leader. And as your pastor, I am responsible for the release of blessings and cursings on your life. If I do not obey the voice of God, then I can be the very one holding you back from receiving receiving everything that God has in store for you. But if I obey 
thank God when he speaks to me, I can be the very one that commands the windows of heaven to be open in your life. Somebody say amen there. But in the same regard, if you curse me, as your leader, you curse your life and the blessing that God wants to release to you. But if you bless me, oh y'all ain't saying nothing, amen, then God will in return bless you, your children, and your children's children. Somebody say amen there. And so this is the situation that the children of Judah found themselves in. They found themselves being punished with a swarm of locusts. They turned away from God and as a result, the locusts were sent by God to punish them. You have to understand, sometimes God will send ugly stuff to get you back in line. Y'all gonna help me here? Amen, amen. So the question, I think we answer the question in ourselves when we say, why would God send a horrible locust on his people? Well, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, the Bible says, this is the blessings and cursings chapter of the Bible. The Bible says, amen, that if a person would not obey the voice of the Lord God, locusts would come to consume them. Amen. It said that they would plant vineyards, but the locusts would eat up the vineyard. They would dress the vineyard, but the locusts would undress the vineyard. They would prepare wine, but the locusts would drink it. They would have grapes for grape juice, but the locusts would eat them. Amen. They would have trees, but the locusts would destroy the trees. Amen. They'd have fruit, but the locusts would destroy the fruit. Amen. Because if a man cursed God, amen, God was going to punish him with the locusts. And I believe that so many of us today can attest that in some way God has sent a locust to our lives. Y'all gonna walk with me? When we made bad decisions against God, he had a way of drying stuff up. Yeah, yeah. God had a way of calling us back to our knees. He had a way, amen, for us to be not off our high pedestal and be made humble before his hand. Amen. He had a way of getting our attention. He may not have sent a natural locust, but he sent sickness. He may not have sent a real locust, but he sent divorce. Y'all know what? Amen. He may have not sent a real locust, but he sent a foreclosure. Y'all gonna talk. Amen. He may not have sent large words, but he sent unemployment. Y'all gonna talk. Amen. In some way, God has sent locusts to our lives. Because, amen, if you forsake him or if you turn your back on him, God will send a locust your way. Amen. If you turn away from him, God will send a locust. God has a way of sending the canker worm. God has a way of sending the caterpillar. God has a way of sending a man, the palm of worm. God has a way of bringing us back to a humbling state by sending a locust our way. Somebody say amen. So God, God, I ain't lost, I'm going somewhere. God sent the locusts to the people of Judah. He sent a swarm, a man, that they know their ancestors had ever seen. Historians suggest that a swarm like this had not fallen for 150 years or more. God sent a powerful pack of locusts. So much so that this swarm of locusts had fully matured. Y'all gonna walk with me in here? Amen. God sent various kinds of locusts. Amen. And they were so powerful that they were considered a great army. They stripped the wine and they destroyed the grapes. They caused men to mourn as a young girl who lost her fiance to death. They caused the priests not to stand in the temple. These locusts did not come to play. Amen. These locusts, they were powerful. But hallelujah, I got good news. Can I tell you the good news? The good news is that God did not allow these calamities to last forever. God did not allow the locusts to continually 
devour the land of his people. Instead, the Lord in his infinite wisdom and his omnipotent power, he declared that I'm going to restore and I'm going to outpour. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, restore and outpour. God promised to bring the devastation of the locusts to an end. He promised to bring their calamities to an end. He promised to bring the destruction caused by the locusts to an end. He promised to bring the tragedy to an end. He promised to bring the hardships he faced down to an end. Because the truth of the matter is, and I want you to get shot get shouting ready the truth of the matter is trouble don't last always and I don't know who I'm preaching to today but I want to encourage you that your locust season is not forever that troubles will not last always I want to encourage you to know that your locusts will soon stop devouring your locusts will soon be cut off the turmoil in your life that the locust has brought it will be halted in their tracks David said it like this weeping may endure but for a night cause joy comes in the morning look at somebody and tell your name Locus will stop after a while. Not only did God stop the locust, but he looks at Judah and he says, I will, I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. God says, I will restore. To restore means to be bring back, to renovate or replace, to refurbish or rebuild, to reconstruct or remodel. God says, I'm going to restore. But before I get to talking about restoration, I seen something else in the text that caught my eye. He said, I'm going to restore not just the situation, not just the circumstance, but I'm going to restore the year. In other words, God said, I'm going to give you time back on your side. Time had been taken from you. But the God we serve said, when I restore, I'm going to restore the time that that no good joker stripped from you. God says, I'm going to give you time when your body was sick and you couldn't travel like you wanted to. God said, I'm going to give you your time back. Touch your neighbor. God will give you time. Y'all remember when Isaiah told him to die. He was going to die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. Before Isaiah could get out the temple, he had to come back and give him his time back. I don't know who I'm preaching to.
Watch this. Every grape that was destroyed would be restored. Every harbor that was cut down would be restored. Every lamb that had been eaten would be restored. Every home that fell to nothing would be restored. And when I was driving down Mercerson Road, God dropped will be restored every diseased patient will be restored every lame leg will be restored every muted child will be restored every broken heart will be restored the crippled leg and the blinded eye the cancer patient
gonna drop something on you. In the name of the Lord, can I drop this on you?
I feel like take off running in here. Just tell somebody, don't tell them too loud because they might start praising them too. But just tell somebody, say, neighbor, God restored me. But then he poured on me. Tell somebody else, say, neighbor.
say I can restore your grapevine but I need you to sip some new wine so let me pour let me pour on you
Put down the music. Say, I want to give. I want to give my best to you. I want to do what you ask me to. I want to go wherever you say. Say the word and I'll obey. I want to live a life that's real. I want to serve you, Lord, for real. Cause you deserve all this and more. So I give, so I give. that all of you, amen, who may not be staying with us to share, as we sing the songs of preparation, we ask, amen, that you would exit at that time, amen, amen. Remember Jesus. 
at the age of 12 teaching and learning from those in the synagogue. Remember Jesus growing up walking the dusty roads of Palestine, healing the sick, raising the dead. Remember Jesus who on the 14th day of the month, oh blessed be the name of the Lord, carried a cross, an old rugged cross up a hill called Golgotha to a place on that hill called Calvary. Come on, remember Jesus. The one they nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. Remember Jesus. The one who declared, if you nail me and leave me on the ground, nothing can be done. But if you lift the cross up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on, remember Jesus. Taking off a cross, putting a bald man's tomb. Remember Jesus. Who early one Sunday morning, got out of the grave with all power in his hand declaring death where's your sting and grave where's your victory today if you can remember that Jesus then you can pray this simple prayer Lord we have all sinned fallen short of your glory for you said if we confess our faults you are faithful and you are just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right now, in this moment, we thank you, we give you praise. Bless this sacrament, the one that needs healing, heal them. The one that needs deliverance, deliver them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Someone say amen. amen. At this time, if the mother, the steward, and their father, brother, and sister, can come forward. In the name of the Lord Jesus.
to take the charge.